times you do it. And uh, it's that ability to practice, practice, practice that, you know, allows you to figure out what is the workflow for something like that. Because who knows, maybe sometime in the real world, you're going to see a part like that. Yeah. So, wow, wow, wow. All yeah. right, guys. Well, listen, yeah. I'll tell you the chat says, I'm teaching my son to never quit. I can't quit now. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's that's great advice. Yeah. So we're going to go into this next challenge, this next CAD versus CAD battle. Are you ready? Are you ready, Connor? Of course I'm ready. All right. Here we go. Uh, let's get this thing ready. Let me just, uh, I'm going to just secretly hand Connor what the next challenge is here. It's challenge number 44. So he can flip that over once we get into it. And uh, guys, good luck to our runners. This is the world championship of 3D CAD speed modeling. You got to earn three points to win. We've got so far Ricardo with one point, Atze with zero points. Here we go. This next CAD versus CAD battle for the world championship featuring Atze from Macedonia, our number nine seed running SolidWorks, and Ricardo Jean from Italy, our number two seed running SolidWorks, begins in three, three two, two, one. one. Go! What is the mass of this part in XXXX grams? The sheet metal notes are the wall thickness is six millimeters, the default bend radius is eight millimeters, and this may be modeled as sheet metal or as a thin walled part. This is a tier six sheet metal part. So this is a part that is not going to be easy. Both of our runners are grabbing a screen capture of this part, and both of our runners are jumping into their CAD systems. Let's take a look and see how they do. So we've got Atze on the left, modeling this thing up. Looks like he's already got a game plan for this thing. We've got Ricardo Jean on the right, modeling this thing up, and he too has a game plan. Yeah. It's always amazing how quickly they can look at a print that they've never seen before and try to turn this into a 3D model. Yeah. And uh, Oz, Oscar, Oscar in the chat says tier six, LOL. We'll see. Yeah, debut of the first tier six sheet metal. I think you guys are going to see that it takes a lot more features than you might realize to turn this thing into an actual completed model and calculate the correct mass. And so we're going to see how well they do on this. Yeah. Big Keith in the chat says hate that I was late. Well, you are here, my friend. It's all good. And listen, we've only we've only seen one point earned. You got to earn three points to win the world championship. So this championship could really go either way. But wow, wow, wow. Sven thinks this one's going to be under seven minutes. Yeah, I mean, with sheet metal with these guys, it's I don't know. Watching these guys, watching these guys do sheet metal is kind of like like watching those like epic fail compilations on YouTube <laughs> where I love watching them and I hate doing them. Oh, yeah. nice. Uh, this is going to be this is going to be something I, I don't know. Watching them do sheet metal is always super interesting as well, just because sheet metal is so, I mean, obviously the similarities, but it's not like doing a normal model. You, there's a completely different process for it. Yes. And that's what I think makes it interesting is that like when you, when it comes to planning out the tree, having sheet metal experience, having sheet metal model is going to lead you to making certain decisions. Like you can see what Ate is doing on the left here. And uh, the, the way that he got to this point in his, in his decision tree and in his modeling tree is very much uh, reflective of somebody who's done a lot of sheet metal work because you, you make different decisions when you're working with solids versus working with sheet metal. And, and particularly when it comes to deciding if you're going to add material or remove material, that's kind of the big difference. If you're just getting into the world of sheet metal, that's really like the biggest change to your, modeling strategy is you have to really be um, intentional about how you're planning the removal of material and how you're planning the addition of material. So if you are just getting into the world of sheet metal, be on the lookout for that. And here we see our runners going through and I'd say adding some fillets there. I love seeing those filleting shortcuts. Yeah. It's just, it's just such a nightmare doing sheet metal sometimes. <laughs> um, so seeing these guys do it, you can tell that they've put a lot of a lot of sweat and tears into like I know with sheet metal explicitly like it's not always intuitive the way you're supposed to do it unless you've done it before and yes. the only way that you learn how to do sheet metal correctly is by messing it up over and over again yeah and sometimes you'll even get blocked you know yeah. sometimes you'll you'll go to do something that works fine with solid features and then when you go to do it in sheet metal it'll say like oh you can't do that like I can't I can't add that that geometry here i can't use that feature because this model sheet metal and that can really throw you off also especially if you're kind of in a groove and then you run into something like that unexpectedly it can really throw you off so definitely um another good you know everything that we're doing here the the the, the modeling that these guys are doing and the speed that they're demonstrating is truly reflective of a lot of practice and it, it really goes to uh to the point of you know practice equals progress the more practice you put in the more you're willing to kind of do the runs do the practice uh the better you're going to get when it comes to a 
real world challenge like this. And uh, I've, I'm really enjoying just watching Ate model through this. Like he's, I like in the in the chat. Uh, he finally found true strategy. The match, uh, the match for Ace. He finally found true strategy. Yeah. yeah. And I think that we're we're gonna maybe see that this kind of uh, gives Ace that that groove that he needs to kind of recover from that crash on the last one. That last one, you know, it's not only about missing that point, but it can also kind of really throw you off your game. And so it's nice to see that Ate is getting a, a sheet metal model here where he's maybe a little bit more comfortable uh, modeling through this thing. Yeah. It's also, I know we were talking about this with the last, I know we were talking about this with the last match, but especially sheet metal and with like the errors, it's just like, oh no, you just can't do this. Um, the workflow and the planning of like, oh, I'm doing this first and then this second and then this third is even more important. Yes. Yeah, I completely agree. And even though, you know, it may look like Ricardo on the right there is is uh, lagging behind or kind of stuck. I think that really speaks to what you're talking about, Connor, which is that, you know, he's he's planning. He's laying out all this geometry because he's planning on how he's going to use this to construct his sheet metal. And uh, there there's definitely been times in my career where that planning has ultimately saved me, you know. And, and so I really I appreciate what Ricardo is doing over here and how he's kind of coming up with that plan for how he's going to turn this thing into sheet metal. And I'm excited to see what happens once he does create a sheet metal uh, when he starts like pulling flanges and things off of this thing yeah it's i mean at this stage also you can just all you can do is watch and and wait because you, you always know ricardo is gonna like pull some <laughs> crazy ridiculous you know yeah but, succession yeah. of of moves yeah right now it's all slow and then exponential growth kicks in and he's he's put out like 300 features on the tree yeah. in, in 10 seconds well and that's the thing too is that like it, it's really a testament you know not only to uh his capability as as far as a modeler goes but you know when it comes to ricard uh, when it comes to um atze if you look at atze's feature tree look at this thing it's, he's already got like 10 15 features in the tree yeah. and that's the thing about sheet metal like when you look at that print you might think oh this is going to be way easier than uh some of the earlier ones that we saw in this in this uh uh tournament but the thing is like look at that feature tree when once uh, the property man Manager goes away look at all those features he's already got in the tree that's the thing about sheet metal is that a lot of times it does take more features than uh than you might expect to get to the desired results yeah so let's see these guys are using solidworks too i remember one of the matches that we had in a previous tournament it was um i forget what program they were using but didn't have sheet metal so they had to manually <laughs> put all this in yeah and just i mean that that shows the the whole reason why the wheel of fate is so important right. especially with cross program matches yeah or if you don't know sheet metal yeah oh, but wow look at my tab in the chat says ricardo is catching up though yo and yep. he's right look at this this is what you were talking about connor ricardo all of a sudden you look away for a second you look back and look at that he's already got that entire lower section with that tab sticking out the front with the hole and the rounded front yeah my goodness ricardo what a master what a wizard wow 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 really cool to see this yeah it's like a rube goldberg machine <laughs> and it looks like Ate bringing up the measure command there, trying to make sure that he's got his distances correct interesting interesting wow 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 guys thank you so much to everybody for tuning in don't forget to hit the like button we've passed two hours now honor terse are saying we've passed two hours now we've officially gone past that two hour hour mark and we're just, we're just going to keep going this stream is not going to end until we have a champion yeah so, whoa, what's going on with Atze's cut there? That was unexpected. I don't think that's what he was hoping to to accomplish there. I mean, that's not what the sketch looks like. No. What the heck happened there? Oh, look at him unchecking some options there in sheet metal. Oh, wow. Unchecked the option for optimized cut and normal cut, and then that fixed the issue. What a strange error. And, you know, would you even think to, to check that if you didn't have sheet metal experience? I would have never thought that that was the issue. That sketch and that cut looked perfect. And then as soon as he like did the cut, it looked crazy, but he knew just to get in there and make that one change and then that fixed everything up. That is so cool. Yeah. Man, that's somebody who's put in a lot of practice on sheet metal. Yeah. Honor Tarser says, let's let's postpone the last game until tomorrow. I really need to take my computer to the repair shop. I like getting it. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's the guy who was telling us about how his fan wasn't working. Yeah, are, you, earlier. are you good, bro? Like, he's giving us all these updates. Yeah, like it, it really seems like your computer either shouldn't be working or you shouldn't have it on. Might be, might be time for a solid box. Yeah, it might be time for a solid <laughs> box. Wow, look at Ricardo. Look at how much he's caught up here. He's already, man, if he gets his last feature in, he's going to have the one half of the model complete and he's going to be able to move on to the final... Oh my goodness, look at how fast he's moving. 
Wow, guys, this is neck and neck. I did not expect it to get this close here in the end. Yeah, are they Holy at the exact smokes. same point? They're at the exact same place in this thing. They're both mirroring. Who's going to come in with the correct answer first? We're watching the chat. We're watching the chat. Who is going to enter the correct answer first in the chat? Wow. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my, God. Oh my goodness. I'd say coming in with his answer, 2038 grams. And Ricardo Jean coming in with his answer, 1947 grams. And guys, the correct answer is 2038 hey. grams. Let's go, Ate. But wow, what a close wow. ending. What a catch up there from Ricardo. And Ate is going to win that point and win that sheet metal matchup. And wow, wow, wow. GG. Holy smokes. One point each in this world championship of 3D CAD speed modeling. The first person to earn three points will be declared the winner, the yeah. new world champion. And guys, put a GG in the chat for Adze. Put a GG in the chat for Ricardo. What a match. Story yeah. rewritten. Wow, wow, wow. It is only with Adze and Ricardo that you would see something like that happen. That yeah, they, close yeah. on a tier six yeah. model. Tier six, wow. they both start with different ideas they both model it in completely different ways and then in the last five seconds you see them have the exact same part and do the exact same thing at the exact same time that's so crazy wow an fms cookie coming in 50 sek this is worth the choo-choo train let's go with the super chat train thank you my friend and thank you very much to everybody who's done the super chat during this live stream. And guys, we're just going to keep on streaming. We are going to keep this train rolling. Be sure to share. If you know anybody out there who likes 3D CAD, you know, roll back the video a little bit. Take a screen capture and send it out to your group. Send it out to your social media. Say, guys, this is amazing. We're watching live the world championship of 3D CAD speed modeling. Postpone Halloween. We got to find out who the winner is. Yes. If you're at a pub in Europe and they're watching the football match, tell them they got to change it. Tell them that we got to watch the world championship of 3D CAD speed modeling because we got to find out who is going to be the next world champion.